give you a little advice. Oh, please do. I'm a grown-up, and I have a pretty clear sense of what I bring to the party. That's the advice? No, the advice is don't get ahead of yourself. Today's guest is known for her hilarious and heartfelt performances in Broadway's Wicked and 9 to 5, but these days she can be seen on TV in NBC's new hit series, Smash. Please welcome Megan Hilty. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Megan. <laughs> Hi. Oh, you're a TV star. Oh, my God. Overnight TV well, star. Well, I'm, I'm on a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> you're, on, you're, on a, a, you're on a very big TV show. Uh, sure. Yes. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. Like, I, you're, I see you everywhere. I can't get you out of my head because, like, you know, I'll be watching, like, the Celebrity Apprentice, and your head will pop up, it's and kind it'll of say annoying, like, "Watch Smash." Yeah. And there's a lot of sm <laughs> Smash commercials everywhere, and promos, and you're singing everywhere, and there are billboards everywhere. It's uh, so weird. I mean, the, the taxi weird? cabs are the weirdest. When I get in a cab, and I'm there talking to me, going, "Well, so Ivy Lynn and Marilyn and Smash." <laughs> Like, oh, I can't get away. <laughs> Have you gotten used to this yet? It's been a few months now. No, it's still very strange watching calves go by and I'm like glaring at me. <laughs> very serious in those photos. What about those Times Square billboards? What was it like when those went up? That was crazy because I didn't see it until we were actually shooting there. Right. And we walked out into Times Square to work and there we were um, just glaring down at ourselves. It was, it's just crazy. Are you one of those actors, I hear from a lot of actors that they don't like to look at their own image or see their see video of themselves. Are you one of those people? Just so it's hard sometimes. Like yeah. it's definitely hard to, to watch the episodes and not cringe and go, oh, why am I doing that? Oh, I'm so awful, you know. Um, but it's, it's part of what we do. We have to, you know, watch and learn from our mistakes and stuff. So I'm trying to be better about that. So obviously there's a lot of pressure on Smash. It's a, a very big show. There's been a lot of money spent on promoting it. But you guys are just sort of, right now, you're just like buckling down and shooting like 15 episodes or something? Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, everybody's been talking about, oh, it needs to do this, or it's got so much pressure on it, and um, there's all these expectations, and, and that's all fine. But as an actress, a long time ago, I had to come to terms with the fact that there are so many things that are so beyond my control, right. and it's such a monumental waste of my time to like worry about it. Mm -hmm. So really, all I can do is go and, and do the best work that I can do, and then everything else is going to fall where it may. And enjoy the time that I have, because who knows how long you know, I'll be doing it. Right. So Ivy Lynn is, is a great character, very Broadway girl. She's, a, she's sort of in the chorus of a musical, mm -hmm. and she's just been cast as Marilyn in a workshop, which we all know. Doesn't, know, doesn't mean she's going to be Marilyn on Broadway, yeah. but, but she's the lead in the workshop. Yeah. Uh, w did you just sort of immediately grasp onto her when you shot the pilot? I, I knew who that girl was before, uh, like, the minute I read the script. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like, I, I know at least three or four people uh, who I've kind of, like, put into this character. Go ahead, you know? name them. Let's, no, let's name never, them. never. Number never one. Will. And I'm one of them. Oh, you're one you know, of them? Yeah, no, okay. she's very close to me too. Uh, I think she's fantastic and yeah. uh, she's deeply flawed, which makes her human and um, and she's interesting, you know, she's, there's nothing um, just ordinary about her. Right. Well, right now we're dealing with um, her, she's now sleeping with the director, mm -hmm. which, you know, it's like, oh, Ivy, here she goes, <laughs> here she goes. <laughs> She, she makes some, some poor decisions along the way, but... It happens. Hey, yeah. sometimes you fall in love, right? Exactly. Yeah. So I guess we're going to see that develop. And what, what, what kind of things... Obviously, you're way ahead of us in terms of plot than anything we know. But what kind of... Uh, I know you've been shooting scenes with great Broadway stars and great numbers. And what are some of the really exciting things you've gotten to do that, that we're going to see? Well, we've got amazing guest stars. Nick right. Jonas uh, is one of our first, like, really big... Yeah, Nick Jonas, like, hitting on you. How's that feel? I know. Um, uh, <laughs> it's kind of weird because he's like 11 years younger than me. I was, I was like, oh, wow. Uh, but he's very professional. You know, like he showed up and he knew all this stuff. And, you know, he's, he's just very mature and very um, on top of his game and, and, uh, and was very respectful of everybody. He was just a real pleasure to work with. Right. Uh, Bernadette Peters? Yeah playing my mom, yeah, well, I mean, which, I mean, well, like, well, how many dreams can come <laughs> true with one job? It's, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Um, she's really, like, the reason why I wanted to go into musical theater in the first place. So to have her, of all people, play my mother is, like, I'm, I'm still trying to deal with it. Yeah, you were, like, obsessed with Into the Woods, weren't you? Yeah. Like, that was one of your yeah, big that shows. Was my, that was it for me. So did you do the witch's yeah. rap all the time? Yep, uh, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I do a little bit. I now. couldn't do it now. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, couldn't do it. So what was she like um, on set? She was so lovely. Like she's so gentle and supportive and like um, I was such a goober when she came on <laughs> set. I was like, uh, oh, you know, I've been there for months. You know, it's like my home, you know, working there. Yeah. But when she came on set, it was almost like I didn't know where to put my hands, you know, <laughs> like it was one of those things. But she's so lovely and um, and it was she gives such an incredible performance on this show. I can't wait for everybody to see it. And I know you did a musical number with Norbert Leo Butts. Yeah. And I, I, there's it's a lot great. of numbers. Like how many numbers have you shot at this point? Well, there's at least one big Broadway number in like each yeah. <laughs> yeah. each episode. So, um, and one like pop cover. Uh, so there's a good like balance. Yeah. And um, and so yeah, we've shot a ton of stuff. Uh, but Norbert was really fun fun to work with too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can't wait till this this all just rolls out. Yeah. Now. Bob Greenblatt mm -hmm. is is the head of NBC now, yeah. and he was the producer. He's he's the man who really brought Nine to Five yeah. to Broadway. So, and I know this this whole show sort of came together when he was at Showtime while you were in Nine to Five. Mm -hmm. So, did, is this something you heard about earlier? Did actually, did he did he hand you the role of a lifetime? No, 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 no. <laughs> um, uh, I think it actually came to him a lot longer ago. Like way before. Like way before. Right. Um, and and it's something they were just trying to find the right spot for mm -hmm. and the right writers and everything and um, and I had no idea about this until last pilot season and I saw the script and it was like oh this is too good to be true you know a mm. show about my world this right. is crazy yeah. um, but uh, the only problem was is in the character description it said that she was a dancer and that there would be a dance call and I called my manager and I was like Tell them thank you so much for this opportunity to audition, you know, You're but we need to wait. Yeah, I, I, let's save some humiliation because <laughs> I've been to these dance calls before and it's not pretty. <laughs> um, but luckily they, uh, they hired Josh Burgos, the biggest star out of anybody in this show. And, um, and he's made it look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> what was your worst dancer audition ever that you went to like for Broadway? Uh, it wasn't for Broadway. It was for uh, Pittsburgh Civic Light Opera. Uh -huh. And I was going in for Andy Blankenbuehler, of all people. And I, I told him about this years later, and he actually remembered it. <laughs> um, but they had, the, they had these huge uh, audition uh, auditions with, like, all the kids from, like, CMU, CCM, uh -huh. Michigan. Like, everybody would come and do these huge uh, ensemble auditions. And, um, and they'd make you dance in front of everybody. Like, it was the worst. It's like my worst nightmare. And um, I think it was for like Anything Goes or something like that. And, um, and so they called my number up and I was with like four other people. And I couldn't remember any of the combination except for these showgirl arms. <laughs> like this was it. And so I just stood in the middle of the room and I was just doing this <laughs> for like the whole like five minutes of the number and I'm just... <laughs> Showgirl arms in the back. I told Josh Vergas about that, and he actually made me put it in several of the numbers oh in Smash. Oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And of course, you booked the job. Andy no, was no, like, that's I never my girl. got hired. No, <laughs> I never got hired at Pittsburgh Civic Light Opera. There was also a reference uh, about your character about Ivy Lynn doing time in Wicked. I know. So There's it's little little Megan little Hilty inside, isms, yeah, little inside <laughs> jokes for us at home. Yeah, and you can see the posters everywhere in the background. There's Catch Me If You Can. There's American Idiot. There's um, yeah. uh, gosh, everything. And Wicked. Yeah, it's great. I can't do nine to five because my mug's on there. <laughs> <laughs> Ivy Lynn did not star in that. Yeah, of, uh, no, she did not. So did you, is it funny now, did you ever know that you had this Marilyn Monroe thing going on before Smash? Because it's funny now in all the reviews, all, a lot of the original, original reviews said, well, of course, this Ivy Lynn should be playing Marilyn. She looks just like Marilyn Monroe. Did, did anyone ever tell you that in your life? Or? No, I mean, one professor in college told me I should do bus stop, but that was, that okay. was about it. Right. I mean, and I, I always thought it was kind of cliche for blondes to love Marilyn, you know. <laughs> right. And uh, I eventually read a biography on Arthur Miller and, um, and read about their tumultuous yeah. marriage, and, and I was totally fascinated. Uh, by then, I, I watched uh, The Misfits, which became yeah. my favorite movie of all time, uh, and just uh, became slightly, obs not obsessed with her, but like, I was like, oh, I get it. Right. I get it. Like, she is a creature from another realm, you know? Um, and, and through this job, one of the perks is that I get to do all this great research on 
her. Yeah. And it's fascinating. Like anybody who doesn't know her life story really like would benefit from picking up any of the biographies. Mm. They all cover different parts of her life, and uh, but it's all fascinating. So you've watched all the movies and you've dug into all that. Oh yeah, all the movies, all the you know, all the biographies. Um, I like to keep reading about her and yeah. like and listening to her voice. Not not like on the movies, but in her interviews right. with people yeah. because I feel like that part of her voice is very telling about who she really is. Uh -huh. Do you want to do a little Marilyn voice? No. <laughs> No voices. <laughs> so Ivy Lynn is 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 feeling her Marilynism a little bit too, right? And so now she's in this romance, and you did a little onset nudity, right? I know, isn't that what crazy? Was that, what was that like? I mean, I mean, it's NBC, it so we didn't terrifying. see. But what was it like shooting yes, that? Yes, it was terrifying. It was the very first day that we shot when we got the Might series well start pickup. With that. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back. Here's a robe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it was great because uh, Jack Davenport is such yeah. a gentleman, and like he was so, he was so lovely. Like he he um, he's done a million of those scenes before, and right. he really like walked me through what right. what it was going to be like, and made jokes, you know, like tasteful jokes right. and stuff, and to lighten the mood. It's very technical, right. all that right. stuff, and um, you know, there's nothing romantic, nothing sexy about them. Yeah. <laughs> So that's that's kind of what I learned. Now I read that when you were little, you fell in love with the voice of Whitney Houston. Yeah, isn't it true that she was one of your yeah. first? So isn't it? I mean, isn't it crazy? Whitney yeah. Houston, we lost Whitney Houston. Yeah, you're gonna make me cry. Like you, you want to see me cry? The goal is to make her. The goal is to make her cry. Somebody made me cry at Fashion Week because they brought her up and it was so close. I was like, I can't, I can't really talk about it. I like because I really, I, she, she was, I mean, she was it for me. Yeah, and um. And it was it was surprising uh, her her passing how how much it it physically affected me um, uh, just because she was such an inspiration yeah. and and it's so tragic to to lose a talent like that. Do you ever sing any of her music? Never. I would never. I mean, to myself, I would never let anybody else hear it because yeah. the way she did it was it was just perfection. So I wouldn't <laughs> even dream of touching have you, them. Have you been finding yourself listening to them though since her death? Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what, what are some of your favorite Whitney Houston songs? Um, greatest Love of All. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, I Will Always Love You. Especially knowing like the original version and, and how I the know, original... the Dolly connection. Yeah, and, and what it was originally written for and right. what she transformed it into. Right, I right. mean, amazing. Um, yeah, Greatest Love of All, I think, is probably... One of my faves. It's funny though that you were yeah. you were you were this little girl, a little white girl growing up in Seattle. And you found up Whitney Houston, and then you got into opera and Broadway. Yeah, well, I I started taking uh, voice lessons, and my my teacher was like, no, no, you're going into classical music. We're not doing Whitney yeah. Houston. Yeah, and and she opened that that genre to me, and I fell in love with it. I I became obsessed with the Seattle Opera, and I would go okay. and I'd sit. They had these like bar stools, like mm -hmm. in the first mezzanine, that were twenty bucks, and I would go and I'd sit. You know, my mom would drop me off and I'd wow. go and sit, and and, and uh, the ushers would always tell me this is the best place to sit because of the acoustics. Uh -huh. I don't know if that was true, but sounded good. <laughs> it sounded great. So you so you liked classic opera? I did. I so loved Broadway it. The darker, the better. After. Yeah. Huh? Like yeah. what? Like what? Electra. Part? What Strauss's Electra. Electra was my yeah. That's your go-to. Everybody dies. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's in agony. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so then you started performing, and right, you started doing children's theater and stuff. Yeah, I did youth theater and community theater, and what was your first and... role where like you sort of went on stage and were like, "This is it! This is an amazing moment!" Are people cheering? Or was it, was it one of those moments for you? Yeah, I was a Boylan sister in Annie, and I was twelve, and I was like, "Oh, this is it! <laughs> 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 this is this is what I, I'm born to do." <laughs> nice. No, I just loved it. So you went to Carnegie Mellon, yes. which is. And, and how'd you get discovered for Wicked? Or I mean, I guess you some was there like a showcase of yeah, we had our showcase uh, what'd in you New sing? York. Um, I sang. Uh, oh gosh, what did I sing? Um, I can cook too. It was my favorite song to sing because nice, nice. <laughs> you only got sixteen bars, <laughs> um, and I thought it was the perfect sixteen bars. Um, and uh, originally, uh, Craig Burns came and saw me do from Tel Burnett, yeah. to Kelsey's office. And the next morning, I got a packet. I went to showcase, and there was a packet, and it was filled with uh, the sides for Audrey in the Little Shop of Horrors. And they were like, "We, we want to bring you in for the 
national tour right. and, you know, um, Carrie's going to leave for a little while. You know, maybe you could Carrie fill Butler. in for a couple weeks. Yeah. Right. And I was like, oh, my God. You know, I was so and uh, and uh, Jerry Zachs was so wonderful. And he put me I mean, they put me through the ringer with <laughs> these auditions. And um, ultimately, uh, I didn't get it because uh, uh, they who did they cast as the Seymour? Anthony Rapp. It was Anthony Anthony Rapp, and right. they're like, you can't you can't be younger than the Seymour, and you know, play. It just doesn't work. So I was devastated. I went from having a job when I graduated to nothing, okay. and um, and then they were like, well, why don't you come in for the Wicked, um, you know, replacement auditions? And I was like, okay, I've been hearing about this musical, you know, and how amazing it is. And I went in and I, is this, am I, have I gone off track? No, not at all. It's all good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. I've, um, I, I, I came in and uh, they had me see the show the night before and I was terrified. I sat like maybe like the fifth row center and I saw the original cast and I just, uh, I mean, act one ended and my jaw hit the floor and I think I was crying and I was like, well, what, how could anybody do this role Kristen after Chenoweth. Kristen Chenoweth, right. let alone like nobody from nowhere, like what, what am I going to do tomorrow? You know, my audition was the next day. I was freaking out. Um, and I went to my little hotel room and I looked at my sides from the show and the songs and I was like, well, I'm not as funny as Kristen and I'm not as pretty and I'm not as this or that, but maybe I could do this. I could make this funny or maybe I could do that. And my one goal was to make them laugh just once, uh, just just so that I didn't feel like I was wasting anybody's time right. or anything. And I went in there and it was the entire, like it, it was Team. Winnie Holtzman, Joe Mantello, Stephen Schwartz, Wayne Sla I mean, every everybody. So you made them laugh? I A couple times. A couple, I you made them laugh. The things made a lot. When yeah. No, I don't even remember. Um, I went in there and then uh, I was like, uh, let me just go back to school and graduate and, you know, I'll be done. And and I got the standby and I, and I was even more terrified after that. <laughs> now, I know that you, you a lot of people saw you in 9 to 5. You mm -hmm. were Dora Lee. You were the Dolly Parton counterpart. Now, Kristen Chenoweth tells everyone she's going to play Dolly. She wants to play Dolly Parton. And she should, Look, yeah. You're not going to duke it out with Chenoweth? Never. A do no. A dolly no, off? No, she reigns. <laughs> she, she should do it. <laughs> I, I saw you say in an interview that sometimes you do uh, what would Dolly do to sort of get yourself out of situations. Is, yeah. Is it still like a, no. she a positive light in your life? Yeah. I, well, the minute I started working with her and, and watching her work with people, I was like, wow, she really is an inspiration to everybody. Like, this is how you should behave. So I started telling everybody my motto, you know, what would Dolly do? And um, and it kind of caught on in the cast and stuff, and we were always, um, you know, if, if there, there was ever a tough situation or anything, well, what would Dolly do? And it always, like, it always made me feel better about whatever situation, and, and I still live by it. Um, if, if, I could, if I could have half the talent and, and, and still treat people with the dignity and respect that she does, then I mean, then I mean, my job's done. <laughs> and you learned how to walk with your boobs out, right? Nine to five. It wasn't that. It was a lot of. It was a contraption that made some things smaller and other things bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Do you miss that contraption ever? A little bit. I did feel a little fantastic in it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Uh, you know, I'll I'll bear the pain for a fantastic costume. Now, another famous blonde, you're going to be in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes yeah. at Encores, which yeah. is so cool. Marilyn Roll. Yeah, Marilyn and Carol Channing. Channing. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. No is, pressure there. Is that one of the movies that, <laughs> that you loved when you were doing all your Marilyn research? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm really a fan of the music. I mean, the music's yeah, just spectacular. Great songs. Yeah, uh, so I'm excited for that and, um, and to make this character my own, you know, and, and still, like, pay homage to the women who made it famous, uh, but it'll be fun. You got to find a good brunette to go against you. I'm sure. There's... I know. Yeah, I'm so excited. Uh, would you ever go brunette? I saw that picture you Oof. tweeted of I you did. and Catherine McPhee on the set with your. Yeah, I tried. You look gorgeous being... with well, brown hair. Well, thank you. I I tried being a brunette for a year and it didn't really work out. Oh, it didn't work out. <laughs> the, 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 I just the didn't auditions feel like me. Yeah. Dried up. Did the auditions dry up. <laughs> yeah. This the, this is just me. So. <laughs> You're a blonde. You're a true blonde. I'm a blonde, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming by. It's so great to see you. I'm so excited about everything that's happening to you. Thank and so you. everyone needs to watch Smash on NBC Monday nights at 10 o'clock. And you will be at 
City Center Encores, May 9th through the 13th, Yay. and gentlemen prefer blondes, and we can't wait to see that either. Yay, Thank you thanks. so much, Megan. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.